Hey what is up guys and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. On today's video we've got a different style video for you today. We're doing sort of a how to find out what this species is because it is a real mystery to me. I've spoken to a few different people about it um, and they all have different opinions on it. It is the Rufescens Sambar. Um, this is a Sambower um, that we currently have in our collection. Um, we're going to talk about what it looks like um, and possibly what species it is, what subspecies it is, or what morph it is. Um, we don't really know exactly. There's a few different articles online. Um, people sell it as different things. And then obviously, once you breed it with different Sambowers, you can also get a whole host of different animals that are produced. Um, is a real mystery, so hopefully you join me on this journey and we find out what a Rufescens Sambower is. So let's start off by looking at our very own Rufescens Sambower. This is Rufus, the male Rufescens Sambower. Rufus, a bit of an obvious name, um, but here's our male Rufescens Sambower that we've had for about six months, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, and if we look at his coloration, um, he is all brown in coloration. Um, but if you do look a bit close, a bit more closely, he does have a few orange flecks on his body. I would say about 10 to 15 of his scales are orange in coloration. One being on his head. It is a bit hard to see in this video. We would need a bit of a close-up camera to show them off properly. Um, but you might be able to see either in this video or one of our other videos he does have a little bit of orange coloration which would be indicative of a Kenyan Samba the Gongolothus colubrinus has that classic orange and brown coloration but obviously the Rufescens has a very different ratio obviously a lot more brown um, and if we look at the back half of the Kenyan Samba does have the keeled scales on the tail keeled scales basically means there's a ridge along each scale giving the rough texture this is on I would say just his tail maybe the back quarter of his body he has these keeled scales then if we look at the rest of him um, pretty standard he has a white belly um, which I think most Sambos really have that white or cream sort of yellowy belly and he has jet black eyes um, obviously that might play a part to the fact that he is all brown maybe it is an increased melanin he does have the black eyes similar to an anathristic sambar um, but that is the overall appearance of rufus the sambar only other thing to mention that i have researched apparently the rufus and sambar does stay a little bit smaller than the kenyan sambar and does get a little bit stockier um, but obviously only time will tell if rufus does match that description so let's kick off this road to discovery with an article from kingsnake.com. Um, this is an article that describes the Kenyan Samba as the East African Samba. It is a slightly older article, so you will have to cut it a bit of slack as all this stuff might not be up to date throughout this article. But they describe it as a third phase of the taxon, the Rufescens phase. And they, they do say that it's not available in current captive snakes, but obviously this is an older article and now we do have a few specimens like our own in our own collection. And it says the Rufescens phase snakes are uniformly brown backed snakes with light orange yellow sides. So Rufe, Rufus is obviously the brown coloration, but he doesn't have them orangey yellow sides, but he does have the orange flecks down his body. Um, it does say that they were sent a photo of a young Rufescens Samboa from northeastern Ethiopia and they're fairly rufous on their back giving them the term rufescens. Apparently the further down south towards Kenya you go they do get darker. This is quite interesting maybe they are producing more melanin um, so depending on where they are which locality they are they're going to be darker and then maybe that sort of grades all the way to the normal Kenyan Sambo that has the orange and brown it just keeps reducing orange till you have an all brown snake. Um, and apparently in Somalia they're dark enough that uh, snake collectors will refuse to collect them because they're confused with the venomous stiletto snakes. So this could be a um, this could be Batesian mimicry, where one animal will mimic the other one so that predators think that they're the same animal. And if you just saw two brown snakes that buried in the soil, you wouldn't pick up either one because if there was a 50% 50 50 chance they were venomous, you definitely wouldn't take the risk. So it says this is the only photo of the morph, uh, but this is an older article and now we do have a few more images. It says, interestingly, the dark back colour pattern is also found in the Arabian Samba and the rough scaled Samba. 
They do describe the rough scale samba as Eric's Witter Cry. Obviously, the rough scale samba is Gongolophus colubrinus, and Eric's Witter Cry is the Whittaker samba. So, I'm not sure which species they are talking about there. And it does also say the desert samba can have the rufescence phase. So, this is interesting because it could just be a random mutation that pops up within quite a lot of different Samboa species might not be a different subspecies or species at all could just be a random phase that a lot of Samboas have um, but it could also be a specific locality of the Kenyan Samba especially if there's different areas where it mimics different animals within its range it would want to change its appearance but maybe genetically it is the same snake so overall this article is a great starting point and we'll have a look at a few more and see if they contradict or they further back up this article from kingsnake.com. So this next one isn't an article I found, but I found an image online which had a Sambo that looked like a Rufescent Sambo on it. Um, if you type in Rufescent Sambo, this image comes up and then we went on to alami.com um, and it came up with a little bit of a description and a scientific name which could be useful. So it describes it as the Somalian Sambo. Obviously, in the last article, it did say in Somalia they refused to collect them because they look like the venomous stiletto snakes. So we're right in thinking that it, they are, are from Somalia. But it describes them as Gongolophus colubrinus rufescens. So if you're not familiar with Latin terminology, um, you have the genus, which is the first name. The second name is the species. And then if there is a third name, that is a subspecies. So this would suggest that it is... Um, just a subspecies of the Kenyan Sambo from, and it says where they got it from, southwestern Somalia. Guess why that, that is why they called it the Somalian Sambo. But this is quite helpful in determining it could be a subspecies of the Kenyan Sambo. Um, but that Somalian Sambo doesn't sound right to me, so we'll have a look at the next article and see what we think about that. So going back to kingsnake.com now, we typed in Somalian Samba and it comes up that Somali Samba is actually a completely different species of Samba. Obviously it called it the Somalian Samba and this is the Somali Samba. Um, and it's actually Eryx Somalicus is the genus and the species. Um, Eryx is a completely different species to Gongolophus. So it would think that maybe they've possibly got the name wrong or the sort of generic name. Maybe they've got the actual scientific name correct, being Gongolophus colubrinus rufusens, but it's definitely not the Somalian Samba. It's got a completely different description, as you can see from the picture there. Um, it's got way more patination. Obviously, this is a specimen. It's not got the exact same coloration, but we can tell the pattern pretty much well. It's definitely not like a rufescent Samba. Not all brown in coloration. Got a lot more pattern similar to maybe... Um, a tartar samba, a javelin samba, something like that. Um, obviously in terms of coloration this could possibly look like a Kenyan samba but I believe the Somalian samba is from a more arid climate so it is probably less colourful in coloration. But this is quite a good little article. It says it's a poorly known species but it's definitely not the rufescent samba so I think we can safely say it's not that. So if we go back to having a look at Rufus, he actually has those keeled scales on his tail. This could help us figure out what genus he is actually a part of. Eryx, the genus Eryx, doesn't have keeled scales. So we have a Tartar Samba that has pretty much smooth scales over its whole body and tail. Um, but species such as the Kenyan Samba, Gongolophus colubrinus, and the rough scale Samba, Gongolophus conicus, do have those keeled scales on the tail. So that would pretty much confirm that the Rufescent Samba doesn't belong in the Eryx genus like the Somalian Samba that we just mentioned. It does belong in the Gongolophus genus. So whether it, we now have to decide whether it is its very own species within Gongolophus or it is a subspecies within Gongolophus colubrinus, the Kenyan Samba, or it is in fact just a Kenyan Samba and it is a morph of Kenyan Samba. So let's go back to looking at another article. This one is from AZ Animals and it says the Rufescens morph. Um, so this would suggest that it's just a complete color variation of the Kenyan Samba. Um, and its description of the Rufescens morph is it doesn't have blotches, spots or clear patterns, which is true. 
Instead, it has a dark brown body that blushes into orange near the belly line. So ours does have the brown body. And then it goes back to saying what that in that original article from kingsnake.com about the edges having that yellowy orange. And then it says the actual belly of the snake is white lined by those orange scales. It says aside from being visually interesting, the rufescence morph is a bit of a mystery. Well, that is why we're doing this video. Um, it says there's been some speculation that the original lines came from a cross between a Kenyan Samboa and a close subspecies Eryx colubrinus rufescens. So it's saying this could be a hybrid snake, the rufescens that we have in captivity, are actually a morph that is a hybrid. Um, but it obviously does get it wrong saying it's Eryx colubrinus rufescens. Um, Eryx colubrinus is what it was described as quite a while ago. It's now in a separate genus, Gongulophus. Um, so we can probably update that to say Gongulophus colubrinus rufescens. Um, so this complicates things for maybe in the hobby. Is it a true rufescens samba or is it a subspecies of Eryx colubrinus rufescens? Um, that is something to keep in mind and we'll go on to talk about hybrids in a minute um, and we'll show you what happens when you do breed a Kenyan Samba to the Rufescent Samba. So the last article talked about hybrids between the Kenyan Samba and the Rufescent Samba um, and on the screen you'll see two pictures. Um, these two pictures are sort of morphs that come about when you do breed a normal Kenyan Samba to the Rufescent looking Samba. On the left, you have a granite Kenyan Samboa. This basically blows out all the pattern and you have that granite patination where it's all speckled and fleckled all the way down the body, um, yellow and brown sort of mixing together. And then on the right, we have a striped Kenyan Samboa. Um, this is basically the orange gets pushed all the way down the spine and then the brown goes to the side. So you have this stripe effect of the orange, which is pretty stunning. And it's a very cool morph that is getting quite popular. But does this mean that they are subspecies or they're the same species? Um, subspecies would be able to interbreed, so that doesn't really help us. And then if they were the same species, they would breed anyway. Um, so it possibly mean that it's a locality of the Kenyan Samba that needs to be upgraded to subspecies specifications. But from what I can tell, and in my personal opinion, I do believe that it is a subspecies. That um, Gongulophus colubrinus rufescens is probably the best we're going to get. Um, and I'm pretty safe, sure to say it's not the Somalian. We'll just have to call it the rufescens samboa and give it the title Gongulophus colubrinus rufescens. So I hope this video has cleared up a few things about the rufescens samboa. Obviously, um, it could be a morph, it could be a species, subspecies. My personal opinion is um, that it's probably a subspecies of the Kenyan Samba. Um, just those arguments that were made during the video that you've just watched. Um, I really do think it could be the Gongulophus um, colubrinus rufescens. It's probably the best. Um, obviously, I don't think it is a full um, species. Um, but you can definitely hybridize that subspecies with the Kenyan Samba um, because that's how you get those morphs that were mentioned in the video. Um, I don't think it is the Somalian one. Uh, I think that is definitely a separate species. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment down below what you think the Rufescent Samba is and if you keep Rufescent Sambas because um, they aren't um, that widely available. Some of those stripes and the granites and the um, tiger morphs are more readily available but actually pure rufescence is actually quite rare in the hobby so we are luckily enough lucky enough to have our own so don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well because you'll get to see more of our rufescence sandbar as well as all of the other sandbars in our collection and all of the other reptiles and amphibians we keep as well but for now i hope you have enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one bye guys